Okay, so which one is better? The iPhone 13 Pro or the Samsung Galaxy S22 Plus? I recently tested out the S22 Ultra on this channel and I think actually most people would and should instead go for the S22 Plus because the Ultra is basically a note right? I mean, we've all gotten fed up with hearing that in literally every review of the Ultra. So today we are looking at a lifelong iPhone user who spends way too much on Apple products. What is it actually like to switch to a flagship Android phone and specifically the S22 Plus? Because between this phone, the iPhone and probably the Pixel 6 Pro, they've probably been the biggest phones of the year. And before we tell you about all the really, really good stuff in Android, as well as actually really, really bad stuff that's putting me off this phone, consider subscribing to the channel down below if you're interested in more tech reviews and Apple versus Android comparisons. And with that said, let's begin with the good stuff. Now, this will be very familiar to those of you who watch my Ultra review because there are a lot of similarities with the S22, the S22 Plus and the S22 Ultra, particularly as an iPhone user coming over to Android. Now, firstly, the keyboards and whilst it does take a while to adjust using the keyboard on an Android phone, in general, there are some features on Android that just work better than an iPhone. When you first log into your phone for the first time and have to like log into everything, Android remembers like simple information like your email address. As soon as I type in Pete, it gives me a one tap option to fill in the rest of my email address. Absolutely love stuff like that. Yes, you can of course use a password manager and I'll throw a few links down below for my best of when it comes to things like password managers, VPNs and cloud storage. Link up here somewhere for that playlist too. But it's not just on logins. When you're say buying something online and you have all of those fields to fill in, a single tap and your email address is there. It just keeps things super simple. Battery life also on the S22 Plus. Also it's pretty okay. It's, it's not as industry leading as the iPhone 13 Pro Max, of course, which is like comfortably lasts two days days on battery, but it's also not as good as this regular iPhone 13 Pro or, of course, the S22 Ultra because that's gigantic because the S22 Ultra has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, but the S22 Plus actually lost capacity from last year's S21 model and it's a 4,500 milliamp battery. All of this to say, for most people, this should be okay. If you're classed yourself as a heavy user, maybe you spend all day on social media, snapping photos or using video and generally using your phone a lot throughout the day, then you might just struggle and need to recharge it just so you make it through that full day. I really struggle with the S22 Plus, like, but my days start at 6 a.m. They finish at 1 a.m. Plus, I'm a relatively heavy user, so that's very, very tough ask for most phones to actually deliver on. The display, on the other hand, I actually prefer this flat display over the S22 Ultra's like curved display. I always find that when using the phone outside that reflections from the edges would basically mean the edges on this phone serves no additional real purpose. So the flat screen on the S22 Plus does deliver. It's actually the same excellent flagship screen that I actually prefer over the iPhone. It's full 120 hertz and it reduces down to 48 hertz. Yes, 48 hertz, not 10 hertz that they originally advertised. It turns out that Samsung kind of misled their users with their marketing. And actually, in fact, the actual display hardware they're using here only sports a minimum of 48 hertz. Whereas Samsung are basically saying that the software they've written can send data to as low as 10 hertz, but it doesn't really matter when the screen like actually will only go as low as 48 hertz. It is a minor detail that you won't actually notice in day-to-day -day use, but it would have an impact on maybe the battery life and can maybe explain why the battery isn't the best here. For the actual display itself, it looks punchy, vibrant, detailed, and watching Netflix or other video content on this phone does look and sound actually really nice. And that is because of a couple of things. Firstly, there's support for HDR content and also with the peak brightness improvements they've made to this phone, which can reach between 1200 and 1700 nits peak brightness. And that makes for excellent content when using this outside, plus great for delivering really good HDR content. And for comparison, the iPhone 13 Pro tops out at just over a thousand. So it's the best in the business when it comes to brightness. On the other side of the spectrum, there's an extra dim setting which lets you dim the screen further when you're in dark rooms. Really great for being in the cinema or maybe just browsing content at night. Really, really love that feature. And one I definitely wish my iPhone had. And all in all, the adaptive brightness is accurate too. I haven't had to play with it constantly like I do on my iPhone. So yeah, as far as good things go, big thumbs up for the display. The design is also something I really, really love about this phone. Now, I didn't really cover it at all in my S22 Ultra video, but the Ultra is not comfortable to hold. It's square and sharp everything the S22 and S22 Plus isn't. Thankfully, they kept the similar shape to the S21, like smooth edges, a thumbprint sensor that's in a good position. It's grippy, and I absolutely love this color. Looks 
beautiful. Really, really love that color. It's also pretty much identical size to the iPhone 13 Pro. So if you are used to the size of that phone, then you won't find much of a difference really when you compare the two. They're slightly bigger if you can see the edges there. Now, one of the best features that I actually love about this phone, and actually the latest S22 lineup of phones in general, and that is the Samsung DeX feature. Now I did mention this in my Ultra review, but you can connect this phone to an external display with a keyboard and mouse and basically have a full desktop experience via a phone. You can properly multitask, use Chrome, copy and paste. It's actually really impressive given again that it's all running off the back of the phone. It is exactly what I wish Apple would do with at least their iPad lineup because when you do connect an iPhone or an iPad to the same setup, it doesn't look or work any differently than when it is when using an iPad. In fact, it's actually really bad experience because it locks the resolution of the screen so you can't actually use the extra screen real estate of the screen that you're having. Also works the same way on the Galaxy Tab. So why can't it work that way on an iPad and switch to say like the full Mac OS desktop? I mean, they've got the M1 chip, so we all know they're capable of doing that. Anyway, on to cameras now. And this was another area where I was actually pleasantly surprised, even though I start off a little disappointed with the lenses they've given you around this time. Now you've got a 50 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide and 10 megapixel three times telephoto, which are all like really great lenses. But compared to the ultra, you are missing that 108 megapixel lens and that 10 times zoom telephoto, which means that you can't do that weird like creepy thing from people in the distance with like 100 times ultra zoom feature that you do get on the S22 Ultra. But that is honestly where the bad news stops. The images the camera produce are really, really nice. And in a few specific situations when I compare them against like the iPhone, I actually prefer the images coming out of this phone than the iPhone. Just look here when comparing a portrait shot using the front facing lens between the iPhone and the S22 Plus, and it is a night and day difference. I'm not quite sure what the iPhone is actually playing at here, but there's a ton of really bad AI type choices and enhancements that I think are going on by Apple in this picture. And I just really don't like them at all. Also, if you look around the hairline, the S22 seems to be so much better at picking out individual hairs, whereas the iPhone, I find tends to miss some of the time. So another great attention to detail from the Samsung there. Oh, and speaking about video. So this is testing out the uh, portrait video on the S22 Plus. And as you can see, I think around the, uh, the edges of the hair, so much better than on iPhone, that horrible blurry mess you get on iPhone. Really impressed. Whereas if you actually compare this to the iPhone, it just doesn't seem like everything's quite in focus like it does on the Samsung. Like if you look around the hairline, certainly like my ears, it's not in focus. It just feels like it slightly missed the focus somehow. Um, whereas you don't get that on the Samsung. It, it does seem to be pretty accurate at pulling the person out of the image and then separating them from the background. So, um, so yeah, I, I think the point to the Samsung here. You've also got also reframe on the front facing camera on the S22 Plus, which gives you a similar feature to the center stage on the iPad, which follows around the room. That works pretty well. Oh, and something I missed out from my S22 Ultra video was that if you actually go into the pro settings of the video on the phone, you can actually shoot at 24 frames per second on 8K, 4K, 1080p, but um, yeah, just hidden away under the pro settings too. But overall, cameras are all really, really great. And honestly, I think you'd only notice one over the other if you literally had them side by side to compare. Covering off iMac message now. Since this is one of the biggest features that most people tend to struggle with when moving from an iPhone into this like Android ecosystem. And I'll be honest, I did struggle to begin with, but there are two ways that I've dealt with this. Firstly, most people with a phone already have a ton of other messaging apps installed. I honestly, I bet you look at your phone right now. You've got iMessage, of course, yes, but how often are you actually using it? Like, What about WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, Signal? What about Snapchat or even Twitter and Instagram DMs to chat? I just found that once I got started, pretty much all of my my friends and family could switch over to another platform really easily. The only ones that I actually had left on iMessage was literally my family. And so the second part to fix that and another problem of mine is to use an app called Beeper. And it's not a sponsored thing, but I get a ton of messages every day across like 15 different messaging apps like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Discord, Slack, like honestly the list goes on. Beeper basically brings all of those chats into a single app. So rather than opening one app at a time and responding to messages, opening up the next app, responding, you know, yada, 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 I can just open one app and reply to everybody from there. Now it does cost 10 bucks a month and there is a very long waiting list, but one feature this app has is iMessage. And you can genuinely send and receive iMessages on any Android phone via Beeper. Now, most people won't want to spend 10 bucks. That's fair enough. But for me, it totally makes sense. So that is all of the good stuff. What about the bad stuff? What makes this phone awful to use? But before I do, recently we hit 30,000 subscribers and I'm running a giveaway for when we reach 50,000 subscribers for this brand new iPhone. This one isn't obviously, but it will be a brand new iPhone 
13 Pro. It's the exact same model that I have. It's the iPhone 13 Pro, the 256 gig model in graphite. And all you have to do to enter this worldwide giveaway is to comment down below with what piece of tech you are most looking forward to buying this year. It can be Apple, it can be Android, Mac or Windows, whatever it is, let me know down below. Now you don't need to be subscribed to win, but when we do reach 50,000 subscribers, I'll be announcing that in a video on this channel. So comment down below, good luck, and let's get back to this S22 Plus and the bad stuff. So I mentioned this in the S22 Ultra video, but now I have absolute confirmation on the issues here. I can only hope Samsung get this fixed quick because as it currently stands, my S22 Ultra and S22 Plus here, which has the Exynos CPU and not the Snapdragon CPU that you can get in the States and other places, are really, really bad. They're really sluggish. Literally a night and day difference when compared to any other flagship phone, including my iPhone and the Pixel 6 Pro. It stuff just hangs, it takes ages to load up, and even swiping to search just like stutters and lags and just isn't as quick as I've gotten used to with all the other phones that I've tested. Now it's not an issue with the Snapdragon chip. I've had a few comments on the S22 Ultra video and it was quite overwhelming. Everyone who had the Snapdragon had no issues. Those with the Exynos had the same issues that I've got. I really, really do hope it's a software bug because if it's not, then there's a serious problem here. Even trying to take a series of quick photos, it misses about half of the shots. Almost like it just can't process the images fast enough. And if we're comparing to the iPhone here, it's really bad in comparison. And yes, of course, even if you go into developer settings and speed up or totally disable the animations, it is still slow. In fact, it's actually really highlighted how much I quite like the Pixel 6 Pro, even though that's got obviously a ton of bugs to deal with by itself. Now, if you are watching this now and you have an S22, let me know in the comments down below if it's a Snapdragon or Exynos and whether you've been seeing these issues too, because if people are watching this this week, next week, next month, or maybe later in the year, it will be really good to see if Samsung do improve and hopefully fix these issues. So if you're not sure if it's an issue, just head over to the comments and you see what most right people are saying most recently. I also had some other minor things about this phone. On Android, adjusting the volume on the side only adjusts the volume for me Media. So if you turn it down like I did and then a surprise two minutes later when it makes a noise, then you need to go into the settings to change the volume of your ringtone notifications and system and sound and other settings there too. Okay, over to the Galaxy Watch 4 now, comparing it to my iPhone and like Apple Watch experience. Overall, it has been pretty good, though I will say that at times it has been a little sluggish compared to when using an Apple Watch. But the one issue that I did notice was that the watch just doesn't work very well when it's wet. So if you shower or swim with the watch, you basically won't be able to use it unless you dry both like the watch face and your finger. Now compare that to the Apple Watch, whilst it was a bit hit and miss sometimes, it was a lot easier to use whilst it's wet. Now there is also the camera issues I mentioned earlier, both the laggy shutter button, and now I have the Pixel 6 Pro, the S22 Ultra, the X22 Plus, and the iPhone 13 Pro. Would a camera comparison be something you'd be interested in watching? I didn't get many comments on my Ultra video, so I'm guessing it's not, but do let me know and I can get that one sorted out if need be. So with all of that said, I think it's fairly obvious to say that I'm not going to be switching from my iPhone to the S22, which is a shame because actually if the performance was there, then this could be a really, really good phone. And for those of you who can pick up the Snapdragon version of this, then I'm sure you will have a much better overall experience than I have. Now again, comment down below with your experience. I'd love to see the comments getting better and better as time goes on as hopefully Samsung releases a software update for this phone. But as it currently stands, I would actually pick the Google Pixel 6 Pro over the S22, the S22 Plus, and the S22 Ultra, bugs and all. Now, if you do go pick one up, then go and watch my next video that tells you five settings that you should change out of the box, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, bye-bye.